What an absolute load of bollocks. Camouflaging your end tackle will catch you more carp. Uh, there ain't anybody on this planet that can say yes, and there's nobody that can say no. And I've probably had more to do with camouflage than, than most people who will actually get to watch this. Uh, camouflage breaks up straight lines. Um, you know, you, you wouldn't uh, go up against the enemy uh, in a pink ballet dancing dress um, and you certainly wouldn't go shooting um, uh, for, for game uh, dressed as a Christmas tree. So yes, um, camouflage breaks up straight lines and uh, I think certainly with hook links it helps to, to break it up. Will it catch more fish? Uh, it's a huge question really and one I'm not going to labour at the point. If it fills you with confidence then that is all it really needs uh, because it's that bag full of confidence that's going to catch you more carp. I can't believe I've got to answer this. Do sharpen hand sharpening hooks catch you more carp? In my very, very humble opinion, I don't think they do. Uh, I think they cause more problems and more angst for the angler than anything else. Uh, and they certainly catch more anglers than they do fish. Uh, sharpening a hook, you're dealing with something that uh, very intelligent people did to design hooks in uh, Japan and wherever we get them from and um, yeah it doesn't catch you any more carp. Uh, the need to regularly change your hooks, testing them all the time even if you've just cast out a few times with it, check the point. If it needs changing then change it but that hook will be at its strongest when you pull it out of the manufacturer's packet and all you are doing by sharpening it needlessly is making it weaker. And Do you want the one most important part of your tackle when you're carp fishing to be weaker. No, you don't. Rigs blow over time. What an absolute load of bollocks. I, I cannot believe that anybody can, uh, who said that can look themselves in the eye when they're shaving in the morning. It's such uh, a ridiculous thing to say. Um, I could go on forever about how simple rigs are that when you catch a carp off the top um, and with bubble floats and stuff you don't even have to strike anymore introducing them to bait to an area a carp is going to feel at its most exposed. All of its senses will be on edge yet we've put out the most simple of rigs uh, with no attachments, no rings on there, no bits of rubber or, or, or whatever. Um, no, we'll rig I, don't, I can't believe somebody's ever said that. Um, and again, that's, uh, that's my humble opinion. Such and such a rig is a big fish rig. Again, utter nonsense. Um, there is not a rig on this planet that you could suggest catches more uh, big fish than another. It just simply isn't the case. If you're confident in a rig and you've caught lots of small carp on it, let's say, there's absolutely no reason you cannot use that rig to catch bigger fish. And again, it's a comment that's thrown into the equation to confuse the angler. Uh, the guy who's got to walk in a shop it, it, and that is the one thing they're trying to achieve and uh, I just can't believe those comments are said uh, in, in public. If you want to lie to yourself then crack on but don't lie to everybody else. Big hooks will land you more carp. 
<clears throat> again, this is probably uh, quite a long subject and I don't want to uh, labour the point, but uh, again, it's, a, it's another load of bollocks. Um, and I want to prove a point here by giving you an example. Uh, the first time I ever went to Rainbow Lake in France uh, was in 2007 and we were just about to launch the new Armour Point hooks at Fox and one hook that I had a particular uh, design, a particular part to play in the design of the hook was the SSC uh, and I took them in all sizes out to, out to Rainbow Lake. I fished in eight, swim 18 which is just fishing tight up against some snags and I landed a cartload of fish and every single one of them was on a size 9 SSC. Nobody can ever tell me that you catch more fish or bigger fish with a bigger hook. It simply isn't the case. Uh, the mechanics of the rig are what catches you that fish and the simple mechanics are the best. Attaching a, a tungsten a bead or two to your hook link is going to uh, make it sink better and sit on the bottom. Yes, it will. And uh, it will keep it out of sight, stop it wafting up, etc. But uh, I think it's more to do with people's confidence than its actual effect. Um, can you imagine how much stuff comes up the bottom when a carb is sucking and blowing over a baited area and bits and pieces going. I know people will say if he's coming in cautiously, blah, blah, blah. Well, he's maybe not going to be feeding strongly enough to get caught. But when a couple of his mates come in, it becomes a war zone in there and there's bits and pieces flying everywhere. Are they effective? Uh, yes, they will effectively keep your hook link pinned to the floor. And uh, of that, I've no doubt. Will they catch you more carp? I don't think so. You won't catch on a pop-up in here. Um, yeah, right. To me, that is probably one of the biggest red rags that you can ever shake uh, at a ball and make it angry. Um, I think, again, through fashion and trends on waters, People all start using bottom baits because so-and-so caught on it. Then we'll all use them and it becomes fashionable and it seems to be the thing to say. Uh, you won't catch on uh, on, on a pop-up in here. And uh, I've heard it on so many occasions, uh, on so many, so many times. Uh, I remember fishing down at West Hampton, down on the south coast and um, I was told, one, that they, uh, they only got caught on particles, and two, that you could only catch uh, on uh, baits fished hard on the bottom. And uh, I did very, very well out of there. Uh, I did a couple of months, a few months one year and a few months the next. I didn't spend a great deal of time down at West Hampton, but I caught most of the big fish in there, uh, and a lot of them and uh, they were all caught on boilies and uh, most importantly of all to some people uh, on a pop-up rig and I've done it on, on countless other waters um, you know people just will not get in except that it is more important where you put that rig than what it's made of what you intend it to do put it in the right place and you've got 95 percent of the way there and all you've got to do is make sure you've got a sharp hook not one that you've uh, sharpened i might add uh and, and you you're good to go yeah don't listen to rubbish concentrate on what you want to achieve and how you want to achieve it A complicated rig catches more carp. Again, utter bollocks. It, it's just so, uh, it just blows my mind to think that anybody, uh, one, thinks it's true, and two, has got the kahunas to actually say that in public. Um, the more complicated the rig is, the more complicated the carp fishing becomes for the individual who's read about it or heard about it or, or is trying to achieve something that is impossible. 
Nine times out of ten, the more you add to it, the more likely it is to tangle, uh, the more obvious it becomes. And these are things that you have to sit down after you've cast it out and think about. That's what makes sessions uncomfortable for people because all they're thinking about is the rig that they've put out there. Uh, everything I do is as simple as I can make it. A stiff link pop-up might not seem a, a simple rig, but with our little short chod rigs, all I've got to do is tie on a 30 pound illusion boom section, fish it helicopter style, and I know it's never gonna tangle. It's gonna be fishing perfectly for me. And the same with my bottom bait rig with that long hair, attach uh, a, a, a small or, or big PVA bag, depending on how far you're going to cast, and it will never tangle. Uh, and the presentation is as perfect uh, as I can make it. Um, yeah, complicated rigs. I just, I just don't get it. I don't understand. The palm test is a true indicator of how a rig works. Again, I, I don't know how, how much more I can emphasize the fact that that is an utter load of rubbish. Uh, there is none of that amazing filtration system in a carp's mouth. Uh, that, 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 that test every way that a hook is going to be turned and twisted in a carp's mouth. There's no water there. Um, it, it's the rig is moving, not you know, it, it, it's just wrong. It is utterly wrong. I've my little a palm test with my little long hair rig, I'll probably just drag it across my hand all the time. Uh, it just it's simply no indication if that is rig, rig is, is good or not. Um, you can drag it over your finger if you like, which many believe is like a, a bottom lip, but you haven't thrown into the equation that uh, that hook is going to take hold on the way out, not on the way in. Um, and, and a lot of people still believe that, that a rig, you know, you've got a comp and you've got to think of it going in as well, hooking it on the way in. I, I don't think that ever really happens. I think it's when that hook is ejected that or the carp moves on to the next mouthful. That's when the, the hook takes hold. And I think that the simple rig mechanics that Lenny Middleton uh, made all those years ago uh, in, in 1979, uh, are as sound today uh, as, a, as they've always been. That hook bait and hook separation, whether that's with a D-rig, uh, a hair or whatever, is very, very important to the way those uh, rigs work. But you'll never know that a rig's any good simply because you dragged it over your hand. My hook link kicks away from the lead every time. <clears throat> Interestingly, it's something I'm trying to achieve, something that, I, that I've thought about quite a lot, to be honest with you. Uh, the sooner I can bring that lead into play when a carp bring, picks up that hook bait, the better as far as I'm concerned, because that's the one thing that is going to make sure that that hook uh, goes in enough for it to bolt off. Um, does it happen every time? I'm not so sure. With certain rigs it will do. Certainly with my stiff link pop-up, if a bird's out there picking up your bait now and again, I'm not too bothered if it, you just get a couple of bleeps uh, and the bobbin settles back to where it was before, you know, i.e. it hasn't moved the lead itself, then I'm pretty sure that that rig is fishing very effectively. And if you're fishing over weed, it's probably done you a bit of a favour. Uh, my bottom bait rig is, is a different ball game, to be honest with you. That can be interfered by, with by bird life, but I think sometimes when you've got bait so tight to the hook and around the hook bait, as I do with the PVA bag setup, it very often doesn't matter how that resets on the ground. If he's sucking it all up, that hook's going to go in and hopefully it's going to find a hold. <laughs> It may look as if I don't believe a lot of things in carp fishing, and if the truth was known, I probably don't. 
Um, I think the way that I've angled, starting off with very limited time in the army and learning about the fish that I'm fishing for, helped me no end. Um, and my continuation with uh, the very simple things that I do and the very simple way that I fish, uh, I've worked everywhere I've ever been. So somebody tell me why I need to change to all these fashionable things. And uh, yeah, most of it's a load of old bollocks. And the more I think about it, the more load of old bollocks it becomes. <music>